Welcome to WO50 Women Over 50 Embody Wisdom and Wellness. Well, I know that you embody wisdom and wellness, my BFF, Eddie. <laughs> so do you. Thank you very much. My name is Corinne, and today our title, our podcast topic is three, The Three Fingers Pointing Back, Cultivating Self-Reflection Over Blame. Over blame and complain, I would say. Over blame and complain, and boy, we didn't blame or complain. Well, maybe we might have done a little bit, but... Well, we talked about <laughs> when we do blame or complain, how we get out of it and how we look at it and how we're tender with it, so... Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. self-reflection and some little stories we shared, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I had to think. I had to think today. I had to really, you know, to express myself a little bit, so that was good. It was a really good conversation, so... Mm. I hope you all enjoy it. Yeah. Ed. Hi, Ken. How you doing? <laughs> I am really, really good. That's good. I hear you're eating from your garden. Oh, man. So much good stuff. I wish I could send you some veggies. I send I send people home with, um, with a ton of veggies every day. Well, not every day, but after yoga. Like I had to have people bring extra garbage bags because I give them kale and wow. kohlrabi and beets and cuc I had picked 40 cucumbers the other day, 40. And then I wow. still, I gave away a bunch and I still had another 15 left. Wow. Wow. My story's a little different. I'm out bargaining with the birds, not to touch my stuff. <laughs> I know. Well, I have to do that too. <laughs> I was like, guys, please don't just let just, just the seeds. Don't eat them yet. Like, wait, just wait. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this... they're coming up. Things are blooming. Yeah. The weather's been really nice the past few days. So yeah, not too hot, not too cold. Well, don't point your finger at the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What does that say? What a segue, Corinne. <laughs> I pulled an Eddie. You did. So you our topic did. today is uh, the three fingers pointing back. So for those of you who don't know what that means, whenever you like point at anything, you know, we point a finger, there's look at where your three fingers are. They're pointing back at you. So the title is the three fingers pointing back, cultivating self-reflection over blame. Yeah, it's a great topic. It's going yeah. to have fun with this one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Cause we can take it into so many different situations and, you know, all of these talks that we have with these different topics is all about helping us to become more self-aware, right? Yeah. More, more self-aware yeah. in our relationships, yeah. our life situations. It's all, it's all personal growth. It's all like self-reflection, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. which reminds me, I had a really interesting talk with a, a new, a new yogi who's been coming here. She said something about personal growth. And I said, well, I consider what I do more, more inner growth because personal growth to me is like everything. It's like your work life and your, you know, it's, it's can be just everything under that umbrella. And I feel like inner growth is more like, cause that's what I focus on is your inner world, even though sometimes, you know, I'll help people mm -hmm. with their relationships too, but it's really because the saying is that I learned from Deepak many years ago that I've understood on different levels over the years is there's nothing outside of ourselves. It sounds like an odd thing to say. There's nothing outside of yourself. So what does that mean to you, Ed? There's nothing outside of yourself. We're all connected. There's nothing outside of myself. Yeah. It's, it's that, that, uh, wow. It's the big question now. It's that it's, the opportunity when we go to blame is to, you know, kind of dig a little deeper, search inside of ourselves a little more because there is nothing outside of ourselves if we look at it like that. So if I have an issue with somebody who's blamed me for something, that's an opportunity for me to go inward, to really go, okay, I'm feeling something around this. What is it? And how can I grow from this? Like this is using all the right words because, you know, I'm trying to get all the right words now. I'm trying to mull it through my head because we want to blame. We want to say so much that this person's wrong. This person's making me feel this way. The, the, or 
the bl name blame game, but it's really allowing it within ourselves. So if I feel upset at somebody, they're not, I've really worked on this because instead of the blaming, if there's nothing outside of ourselves, then I go inward. I can't blame this person for, oh, they're making me feel this way. They're making me angry. They're making me, no, I'm allowing this to happen within myself. So then I have to dig a little deeper and go, what is this I'm feeling then? Because mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to blame the person for making you feel that way. I, I, I think I do this on a daily basis, Corinne. I think we all have to do it on a daily basis. I think our life gets a lot better when we do it on a daily basis. And How about I, and, with you? Well, that, I think I'm going to go back to the first thing, and I will talk about me too. The, the first thing you said was when somebody blames me, when I feel like somebody's blaming me, because, and if you don't mind me sharing with you, because you are very sensitive, and I think I would probably feel the same if somebody... I don't know. I'm thinking about some people that have been ticked off at me over the years and I don't take it personal because if somebody mm -hmm. has a problem with me, if they don't tell me about it, then I can't assume that I know what's wrong, right? I can't help them if they don't tell me. And so I've seen you in the past get sensitive about it. Like think, what have I done wrong? Now that is a great thing to ask yourself to reflect how am I showing up in this relationship? but mm -hmm. it also can be their stuff and belong mostly to them, mm -hmm. you know, and you haven't done anything wrong, but they have a perspective that you have shown up. So that was the first thing you mentioned about if somebody's yes. done something wrong. Yes, that's good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So, so there's nothing outside of yourself. It, it, I, I think it means the same, very similar to me. I might word it differently. It's like when I think something is happening to me, I feel now that it's never happening to me. It's happening, but it's not that as personal as happening to me. And it's like, how can I sit with it and be with all the different emotions with it? Um, whatever I feel that somebody else has done, it's like, how, what, why do I feel that way kind of thing? And so it's really being self-reflective and sitting and sitting with the uncomfortable emotions that can come up mm -hmm. and people, cause we're, you know, we all have, I tell people this in yoga all the time. We all have, you know, emotions and we, and humans are very kind of unstable. A lot of times, even our, our partners are the people we love the our best and even our best friends, they, they're human beings and they have moods and they have emotions. And so mm -hmm we can't rely on somebody else or something on the outside for our stability or our peace or our happiness about anything has to come from within. Yeah. When you said, what, why is it uh, happening to me? Or we're, we kind of turn it around and go being okay with just it's happening. Yeah. It's not happening to me. It's just happening. Yeah. And then that kind of takes the sting off it a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's not as personal. So it's not yeah. that we're not that we're not we're not avoiding it. So the the thing is still showing up, but mm -hmm. it it takes the story out of it because when it's happening yeah. to me, then that usually involves something or somebody else has you know been doing something to me or say or a situation. But it's like if it's just happening, it takes the personal out of it, and also, then you can breathe a little more have a mm -hmm. little more space around the situation of the person and then sit in the uncomfortable emotions that whatever they might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I've come a long way uh, from years ago of really taking things personal. And I know there's a lot of people who even come into my office that we talk about it because I, I kind of feel into it of where they are, you know, and go, Oh yeah, I know. I know that feeling. I know that that tender heart feeling or that uh, sensitive or really being empathic or, you know, uh, even a doormat sometimes, you know, we've all gone through <laughs> all these things, these, these processes, whatever we want to call them. Like the language keeps changing around it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the interview we, we did with Alea. I'm, I, even that, that whole conversation with her, every time I speak, I keep thinking, okay, there's an easier way to say this. 
less yeah. words. Less yes. Words. <laughs> less words. That's always a good cat. Cause words can get us into trouble. Like mm -hmm. I, like I'll, I'll, um, I'll just notice, you know, when I see people, let's see, see, for instance, somebody teaching yoga, I'll notice that I, I don't feel them connecting with their words much. You know, think about when you tell a story, when you've told a story a bunch of times and when you don't, what the difference between when you're telling it the first time and it's really alive or when you're telling it the 10th time, unless you make up a bunch of things like you, you can elaborate on stories. You can make it new every time, which can happen. Mm -hmm. We can, we can tell a story or tell things, but they can be new every time if it's really alive and it's what the person is needing to hear. But, but like, I'll hear people just repeat things over and over again. And I just feel they're not connecting mm -hmm. with the aliveness of the situation. Right. Yeah. It's almost like there's no emotion in it. There's no felt in it. Yeah. You know, it's all from there's, the head. Yeah. It's, it's just words, just words. And there's no, whatever that is, you know, like Sean or Alea or you or I would call it that the felt sense it's in it, but it's that emotion, that moving, that heart. Remember the heart map? Some person had done some work with the heart map. And that was one of the things is the heart um, really just pumps until where does the emotion come from? It's that felt, <laughs> it's that felt sense. It's that we don't even know what that is, but it's like in a conversation when somebody's talking and all of a sudden you're like, Oh my God, I totally feel you. You know, it's like, I get it. And someone else is hearing it and it's just words. There's that connection, that beautiful energy, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever that is, that essence, that flow, that something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when, when I, you know, and so that was a situation that happened to me recently was I noticed a yoga teacher doing that. And I noticed that what it brought up in me of me, the frustration. So what do we do when we point outward? There's three fingers pointing back. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, why does that bring up something in me? And there was, you know, there was some story around, you know, cause it's somebody teaching here at Ivy house and, um, and how, I want to be, you know, think that I'm responsible for people's experience of them being good and all that stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very alive recent situation where instead of being upset, I just look at, okay, why is that bothering me? So it's all about me instead of being about them. Cause I can't do anything. I mean, as a, as a teacher, I can, cause I am like a coach for, for this person is like, I can go to her and talk to her about some things and try to help her because that's what's going to be. Uh, of service to everybody involved is to try to help her be a better teacher and connect. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but if it's bothering me, there's, you know, for me to look inside to figure out why it's bothering me, what are the overlaying things? And, you know, cause ultimately I can't be responsible for everybody walking into Ivy house and their experience. That would be exhausting. You it know, would be. yeah. Yeah. And like yeah. you said back a little bit ago, there's the inner growth. Mm -hmm. There's that inner growth within yourself of even being able to recognize it, right? Like I'm, I find, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm catching myself more. Like I'm, my message is clearer. I don't know if you've noticed that. Like I, 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 can, I have, I have. Yeah. Like you've always been really good at getting your message across really. And no, I you think know, I've gotten better over the years. I've gotten yeah, better most for definite. sure. Oh my gosh, yeah. most definitely. Even our communication with each other mm -hmm. has gotten better or our moments where we're like, okay, feelings are hurt or something was said. It's now we know there's the intention is never to hurt. It's never, it's not to hurt. It's not to, oh my God, why did I just do that? Right. It, we, we're mm -hmm. catching ourselves a lot or we're, or um, I don't know. We don't even have many moments anymore that we, where we go. Gee, that was really inconsiderate. <laughs> oh, we had moments in Sicily. <laughs> well, Sicily was very challenging. Like, my God, and we're still friends and we still really miss each other. Like still. And we and still have we... a planned trip coming up. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I know, which is great. But Sicily uh, was really, really tested us. I mean, we. Yeah, it did. And it and did. when I look back and, and you 
traveling with me and my all my little selective sensitivities. And then you not being able to get your rest, like your deep meditations that you're so used to, like, wow. You know, I was even thinking about that the other day. Like, wow, we saw almost all of Sicily. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we did. We walked like eight miles a day, 10 miles a day sometimes. We and did. we didn't have much nourishment because the food there sucked. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like, and it didn't, it, it, you know, it wasn't re- like it was Sicilian food and it's real, you know, a lot of, a lot of bread and cheese and, you know, here I am gluten and dairy free and, but we made it work. Like we found things oh, yeah. and we, we made it work and we can't blame Sicily, right? <laughs> you too much bread. And, you know, it's like, okay. Point my three fingers back at myself. No, and we I made don't think it work. We, we did. And we did. We we appreciated, even though it was challenging. We appreciated the beauty of it where we were, uh, you know, at every point. I mean, we really had a lot of laughs, and we look we back did. on the pictures, and it, you know, I mean, the pictures are freaking amazing, and we yes. had a lot of laughs to go along with with those pictures, and we, we had really a lot did. of. Um, yeah, adventures and stuff. So we so, had we had yeah. cheekbones and a lot of pit, like a lot of good memories. <laughs> we, did, we dropped about ten pounds. <laughs> yes, we did. I remember. Remember when I was walking out with my green pants? You're like, "Geez, Corinne, those are falling off." You know. <laughs> We yeah. walked so much. Yeah, we did. It was great. It was great. But you know, that's the thing. You know, you a lot of self reflection goes on when when we stop blaming stop blaming others. I mean, you could have blamed me for a sucky trip and I could have blamed you for a sucky trip. It wasn't a sucky trip. It was fabulous. Yeah. But we didn't blame each other. I mean, th- that little time, remember the mouse came in the room? I didn't blame you for the mouse coming <laughs> no, in the didn't. room, <laughs> getting into the final good bit of bread I found. Like <laughs> of all things, it got into my bread. What? <laughs> oh, that was funny. And we made it work. And you didn't blame me when we had to tr- drive into Palermo in the middle of the night. Like, bless your heart. You're like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. We got through it. There's there's some adventures, right? Well, yeah, because yeah. I remember even when I was upset with the driving, I was like, I'm not upset with you, Ed. I'm just, I'm just really trying to focus right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know. I, I get it. I get, I get it, it Corinne. I do. I, I That would be a funny little sitcom there of us arguing like that. I'm not upset with you, Ed. <laughs> I, I know. I'm doing some re- re- reflective growth here, Corinne. It's okay. I, I feel the inner growth within you happening <laughs> right now in this moment. <laughs> yeah, we shared oh responsibility. Gosh. That was yeah. beautiful. We yes. did. We did. So what, what other ways can we blame things? Um, I mean, you can take it really general like, you know, even you can take it general and this is a good one for you, like even blaming the weather. Yes. You know, and so, and so you can't, you know, Eddie lives in a very challenging weather. I mean, it's gorgeous up there, but you get winter for a very long time. Mm, And, and even though you love winter after like six months of it, there's, you know, some challenges. And so, um, you don't get, pissy. Mm-mm. You, sometimes you get frustrated, but then you're, you, you know, figure out stuff to do, whether it's your pickleball or your sun lamp or your D3 vitamin or whatever you do, mm-hmm. you know, because we're, we're responsible. So then, okay. So that's something more outward. So, and what about a situation like for, I help a lot of people with situations at work. Like I have a couple of clients that have corporate jobs and one big challenge people have is that cor- corporate jobs or artistic jobs too, the several, I mean, there's a lot of people right now that have so much workload on them, mm-hmm. so much workload. Yeah. And, and, you know, COVID shifted that a lot too, where people had to work from home and now they're back into office environments or trying to or half and half or yeah, sheer space or accommodate so much. And, and, there's, there can be a lot of blaming going on, but then what starts to happen is, you know, even sharing responsibility of that, of, of not blaming, just going, okay, this is my piece in it. Or even in partnerships, right. With, with, um, when people are going through a tough time in their relationships, 
mm-hmm. and they're blaming this person for, you know, it's you, but you're the problem. And the other person say, no, you're the problem. And then it's like, and the screaming matches happen or how does. Yeah. And just being able to stop. Yeah. And what? sit in it and doing something different, like going to therapy or, you know, doing something differently. So, you know, cause what, that's what happens is couples get in the same dialogue. They're, they've, yes. they've been together for many years, the same, probably they say couples argue about the same things over and over again. So if you can just stop, remember I shared a few years ago, that's how I, I got into a better relationship with my dad is I just listened more. Yeah. I just yeah. started to listen more. And instead of going into the same patterns that I would normally do of frustration with him or whatever, because it was the same, sometimes the same thing that would happen uh, the time with him, like whether it was in the kitchen or something, I just would listen more. And I noticed frustration coming up with me. I'd soften into it, mm-hmm. just be tender with it. And so that I, they're creating more space and compassion within myself. So this is a technique that Alea and actually Alea teacher Neelam talks about a lot. Have you listened to that yet? I sent you. Not yet. Oh my I, gosh. I will. It's on it my will, It will be mind blowing for you. I'm so yeah, excited. Okay. So it's like being tender and being tender with a situation or with a person doesn't mean you're being t- actually tender with that person. It means you're being tender with your approach. So, mm. so even if like, so you're way overworked and, and this corporation wants even more out of you. Or if you're being pissed off at COVID, like there's a lot of people that still blame COVID for a lot of different things, right? Whether it's their health or their work situation or whatever it is, right? Oh, well, nothing's that way since COVID. It's like, okay, can you just sit with that frustration? Can you just soften? Can you just soften with your approach just a little bit? And what I find, what happens with me when I do that is it creates space. And yeah. when there's space, then I can breathe more. And when I can breathe more, there's usually like a, a softening around everything. And usually there's like a creative solution or a letting go of the gripping that will start to come forth from that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when a shift and a change, whether it's a shift in perspective or a change in the situation, whatever can happen. And it's, it's, and you can do this with the most challenging situations and people in your life. You can yeah. do it with anything. And if you and if you feel like there's something you can't do it with, email me or email Eddie and mm-hmm. we'll help you with it. Because if you yeah. just soften, take a breath and just soften your approach, soften, soften the way you look at it, be tender with it. I remember somebody saying in an LA retreat one time, she goes, I don't know what you mean by being tender with it. Hmm. So there's people that don't, yeah, and that, and and same with with um, when I listened to this interview and Alea's teacher was, she talks about tenderness a lot too, but she mm-hmm. explains a little bit more. Alea t- doesn't, it, Alea is more into presence than explaining things. Mm-hmm. And Neelam really explains. So the the guy that was interviewing her said, "Well, what about like, you know, armies and and guys going into to war? Like they're trained to be like tough, and they can't be tender; they'll get destroyed." And he, mm-hmm. she said. She said the same thing I'm saying. It's it's not the tenderness going into a, a battle that you know with it's going into it with more space around the situation or, or your head space around it, sort of thing. It was mm-hmm. it's the same thing if you've ever heard the Bhagavad Gita with Krishna. You know, that's what our Krishna was telling Arjuna when he was going into battle with his his family, and it's all about the battle of your ego, actually, in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm-hmm. And Krishna was saying, you know, how, how to, I forget the exact advice, but the bit, it was the same thing as just be tender. And then he didn't want to fight. He didn't want yeah. to fight. But yeah. then sometimes you do have to step forward and, you know, do what's needed to be done. And it's not, it's uncomfortable. There's a lot of times in life we do have to do uncomfortable things, mm-hmm. but can we do it with compassion for ourselves, for other people? not blaming, not creating the extra by creating extra story around it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was on the phone with somebody today who was really struggling with the work she was at and her health situation and all with her husband. And I was like, whoa, 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 let's just come back right here, right now. Can you just soften about all of it and just breathe? Mm-hmm. She was spinning out a little bit. 
And it's just, if we can just come back, because that's what our mind tends to do. Our minds, our mind is actually when it's spinning out like that, Tony Robbins calls it the crazy eight. It's yeah. actually trying to find a comfortable place to land. Mm -hmm. That's temporary. Because you'll find a, a comfortable place to land, like a, an attitude about something that, oh, I can do this. Yeah. But if you just soften that, can that, can that situation just be there right now? Or can it be, because obviously it can't be resolved in this moment. Mm -hmm. Can that be okay? And that focus, where that focus goes, I, it's funny because I listened to Tony um, the past few days. He had a workshop on the go and I listened Yeah, I listened in. to it a little bit yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and that was one of the biggest things I heard was the focus and, but he never said what you just said. It was more feel that what you're feeling. Like if we allow that focus to transform or whatever it is, take it in and, or let it land or let it like kind of shake off what, what all the things we're saying to ourselves, like, you know, because we tend to go, I don't have enough. I don't have, I can't do that. I don't have enough time. Yeah. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough, 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 enough. Right. And he goes, just shake all this off and just go feel what it is that you're wanting to feel. Mm -hmm. What, where is it you're wanting to go with what you're thinking? Right. So when you start to just go, well, you don't want to be going in all the negative, you know, ways, and you don't want to be going with the crazy thoughts you're thinking. And, and even Alea said it in her own way, just that beautiful mystery where just, where, what is that, that you're feeling? What, what is that? Just like sit with it. It's like, you just said, sit, not this is problem. This is a problem. That's what I can't do. And this is what I can do. It's sit with the feeling. What's the feeling, whether it's, I want to work it out with my partner. I want to get that job. I want to, you know, stop yelling at my child or I want to, <laughs> you know, or it feels better if this, hmm, okay. And it starts to settle. Mm -hmm. Like you say, you just let it land. Mm -hmm. I think you said that actually. Did I? Yeah. Okay. That sounds like an eddyism. Let it land. Let it land. Let it, let it soften. Let it. And again, the words like be tender with yourself or, mm -hmm. you know, some, some of us have tender, very tender hearts. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and so there's more gentle and more ease needed or, you know, just softness. And I, you know, I, I, this is what we, when we start blaming, if we can see the fingers pointed back and go, you know, hmm, yeah. maybe a, a little, hmm, maybe I need to dig deeper, hmm, <laughs> you know, more softness. Let's, let's see, what are those fingers pointing back then? Because mm -hmm. if this is creating something else within you, then there's, there's more research, more inquiry, more questions, more, hmm, what's within that mystery that I have to figure out? Mm -hmm. Like even Alea said that. Well, she said that. That's why she, her words are coming in. Mm -hmm. And Tony's coming in and all these beautiful speakers out there, you know? Wise beings. Wise beings. Yes. Mm -hmm just having some understanding about ourselves and mm -hmm. more empathy with ourselves. And <laughs> yeah. Cause I think about, you know, I come from a very opinionated family and one would say I'm very opinionated. You know, I, I can be very opinionated. I feel like I've softened with a lot of it, but it still comes up, but even softening around all of that opinions, like strong ideas about things. It's like, if what if you if you think you're really sure about something, it's kind of guaranteed that it's gonna change, you know? It's like Yeah. Even when you of, said that, I went, Really? Do you think you're, you know, and is that true? <laughs> yeah, and that's it's falling away because I I've, I've something I've seen about myself in the past and something I feel like is starting to soften and drop away. Um and I like it's I like it. You know, well, I even like when I, I, I do too, I, I love kind of 
kind of stepping outside yourself is what it feels like, you know, where when you look, when years ago, one big thing I would really not enjoy is the judgment, people judging, right? And now when I, I, it's almost like I'm watching a film and I'm watching someone judge somebody and it's like, I'm going, oh, they're judging, huh? And it's not like, I'm like, oh, oh, they're actually judging me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. There's, no, there's it, it's interesting because you're watching it now. It's not, yeah. it doesn't sting and it's, yeah. and it's like, yeah. oh, wow. They, they is that self-awareness? Hmm. That's beautiful, Ed. That's such a beautiful thing because used to be we would be so like affected if we saw people judging us. And there are still many people probably listening right now that are very affected when they feel judged, whether they're mad at people or whether they feel insecure about it or whatever the emotions. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Those feelings are okay. Yeah. It's when you welcome them and you soften into them and you're, instead of saying, you're judging me with the finger pointing, look at the three fingers pointing back yeah. and say, okay, that person is judging me. How do I feel about that? Well, and if you really ask it, okay, I feel, I feel sad about that. I feel like they're wrong. I feel like they, they shouldn't be judging me. Hmm. And we talk about shouldn't, should, don't shit all over yourself, but it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, but they are, the reality is they are, and you can't, you can't control what's outside of you. You can't, you know, no. And, and if so, they're thinking it and you're not, and you're going, I'm not judging you. And it doesn't matter how many times you say it, if they truly feel and think that you are, then you just got to allow it to happen. Yeah. You can't change anybody what they think. You can't, can't, you can't even barely change your own mind. What you think you can't change other people. So, so yeah. that's something if you, if you do, if you are sensitive about people, what they think of you and judging you, which, which we all are to a certain extent, but as you do mm -hmm. this self-awareness and you soften and become more aware of this stuff, it does start to fall away. That's yeah. what you can look forward to. And, yeah. um, and when you start to understand that saying, there's nothing outside of yourself. You know, I can't tell you how many people I've said that to and said it to myself over the years. Yeah. Okay. So if there's nothing outside of myself, how can I deal with this? How can I take responsibility? How can I look at it? How or how have I, well, yeah, well, what came into my head just then, sorry to interrupt, it's but okay. I went, how did I contribute to this? Yeah. To this that's outcome? a good one too. How yeah. did I contribute to this? Mm hmm. hmm. My part of what's my part in this might yeah. be 50 percent, might be 30, might be 80, you know, yeah. but try to be honest with yourself about what your part in it is. That's a really good point. Yeah. 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 I hope mm. we've been able to be specific enough because I, I it's hard when we're talking when we're not talking about specific specific situations. But I, I hope we talked about a few enough so that people can get the gist of what we're what we're trying to say here, what we're trying to portray and and and. Yeah and uh, share. Yeah. And as we keep moving through all our little podcasts, we just keep getting clearer and clearer ourselves. So yeah, thank I you mean, for joining us on this journey. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you know, um, I think, I don't know if we've mentioned this in a while, but you know, we originally started this podcast, W O five O women over 50 in body wellness and wisdom. Um, we started it as really a way of trying to embrace aging and where we are at and celebrate where we're at um, and look at where we're at as for ourselves. Yes. And, and we get to talk and, and see each other every week and from across the miles and we get to share all this because we're, we were sharing it anyway and with each other. And I don't know, I just hope that, you know, it, it continues on a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was thinking of how, when we first started, I hadn't turned 60 yet. And I think it was like three or four months before I turned 60. And I really, and I, 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 I still don't love the number 60, <laughs> even though I'm 61 now, but turning 61 certainly was not a big deal at all. Um, turning 60 was a little bit bigger of a deal. And so I feel like I'm softening into that relationship with getting older in a society that worships youth and beauty, being a woman and mm -hmm. um, talking about it with you and with other people and looking at 
the different judgments and limitations that I have within me. And yeah. Yeah. yeah I love it. I think we're, we're both working on just keeping it real and, and doing that inner growth, you know, just, and, and speaking with other women that, that are, are doing the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, and they want to share their perspectives because it is, all different points of views and different perspectives and you know it's it's wonderful i love sharing and you do too and we love that you listen in and uh hope this helps you know a little bit you know it helps yeah helps Mm -hmm. me to dig a little deeper and helps me too ed good yeah yeah love you all hope you're having an awesome day or evening wherever you're at and we'll talk to you next time Thanks for listening.